What up, what up? It's Garage Jim, homie. And today I'm talking about staying tight year round, man. Staying ripped, shredded all dang year. And then is it worth it? Before we get into this here, please click the subscribe button. I got content coming out all the dang time for you, man. So click subscribe and let's get into this, homie. So, hey, man. I just want to talk about, God is good, man. Let's not forget what we're here to do, man. We're here to talk to some God. No, for real though, God's amazing. You are, man. Hope you're living from the heart, staying out of your head where it's noisy. Together, let's get this dang muscle. Look, man, let's get into it. I just want to make a short video here talking about, I choose to stay tight all year round, man. I've never been a dude who believes in like, that extreme cutting and bulking, man. I've never really liked that. I'm gonna talk about why. Um, you know, first of all, I've never bought into an off season or whatever. You know, I, I don't, I find that to be like a real excuse to um, just kind of eat like garbage. <laughs> a lot of people, I'm not a pro bodybuilder, so they, you know, they might claim off season or something but my AA sponsor man he's a pro bodybuilder he never believed in an off season either man there is no off season i like staying really close to the mark all year round and um i'm going to talk about how i do that from uh, every aspect but i i'm really a believer i train in quarters i always have trained in quarters um for dang near 10 years now, man, have I been training uh, in quarters. So I, I go January, February, March, and I feel like the first quarter I train in, and I take off the last 10 days in March. Um, and that's a stim break. Uh, and I know, man, like 10 days is not enough to fully reset your stim tolerance. It's enough to uh, give your brain a dang rest. It's a, it's a stim break, no caffeine, nothing, and a, and a rest week, 10 days rest. I get a massage, no, no uh, working out, no cardio, nothing, no yoga, just meditation, prayer, relaxation, sauna, you know, really rest. Then I go uh, April, May, June, last 10 days I rest. Uh, July, August, September, last 10 days in September. Uh, October, November, December, last 10 days in December. It's been freaking awesome, man. It's been, I believe it's helped me avoid injury. It's good for my brain. It gives me a chance just to chill for 10 days, uh, not let my head go crazy. I put it on the calendar so I don't talk my way out of it. So the way I've always really trained is for me, what I consider cutting would be um, the, uh, April, May, June, and July, August, September. So those two quarters, I'm trying to be like ultra tight. And then the other two quarters, you know, January, February, March, April, May, or uh, I'm sorry, October, November, December, January, February, March, those six months, I'm trying to just be regular tight. So it's never, it's always staying tight, you know, but how tight? So for me, man, the difference, listen to this, man, for me, and I'm telling you, you could say what the heck you want to say talking out of the side of your neck. The way I train before, t a lot of people run their mouth and say, well, well, for those of us not on testosterone, not on uh, PEDs, it's different. Shut your mouth, homie! Man! I'll spank you, homie! The <laughs> Listen, for real though, the way I train now, the regimen I have now is the exact same regimen I had before I was on TRT. When I was suffering from low T, the regimen hasn't changed. So you can say what you want. I haven't changed it since. The only thing that's changed is I've tweaked Maybe the kind of split I do, or I've experimented with different types of food, or the whole base of everything I do has not changed by being on 
a punk butt hundred milligrams of testosterone every five days. It's so just stop with the nonsense, homies. No, for real though. I just want to say that before I get the stupid comment. Um, so training in quarters helps me keep things like all I got to do is train these next 11 weeks, like this way, yada, yada. It keeps things regimented and putting on the calendar makes it a plan. So I don't back out of that rest week and stim break. Now, when I'm what I call cutting for me, let's say I'm eating 1900 calories a day, you know, which is low for a guy who puts his heart and soul into freaking pumping iron, and then I do cardio the other time in the day. Let's say I'm doing morning fasted cardio and then training at night. That's pretty low considering I'm training twice a day and putting my dang heart into it, 1,900 calories. So let's just talk about the food. The difference from me, the difference from me Feeling completely depleted and feeling like junk versus like feeling freaking awesome and energized and higher sex drive and better workout is only a few hundred calories more. Like let's say I had 1900 calories and I'm like depleted and I'm feeling like, man, I'm really depleted. I need to eat more. I could tell it's taking a toll on me. Like I'm eating 1800 calories or, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm like, feel like I'm on the verge of being run down and like I can catch a sickness cause I could tell it's like taking a toll on me. I could up that to 2,300 calories, only 400 more calories a day. And it's the world of difference. So I'm still staying, staying super tight and super shredded and, and it's tight, you know, harder than Japanese arithmetic and staying super tight. And I'm able to feel better. So for those other seasons, you know, in the cold months, the fall and the winter, let's say I went up to the most I went up to, the most, let's say, and this is even hard for me to do, like 3,000 calories. That's like extreme. That's like very high for me. I'm feeling freaking amazing. Like it's, that's a lot of food for me to eat. Clean food, you know, high volume, clean food. I'm feeling amazing. See, see the problem with a lot of people is they go on YouTube and they watch these drugged out bodybuilders like like Jay Cutler or like uh, God knows Ronnie Coleman or these people, and they're eating six thousand dang calories a day, and then I meet these people in person who are my size. They're little guys, you know. I'm only 170 pounds right now, you know, five foot six and a half, five foot seven on Tinder. Hey, Stephanie, don't, don't make me get back on Tinder. You best behave. I know you're watching. Because I'm going to say I'm five, se- I might even go up to five, seven and a half this time if you piss me off. I'm just kidding, man. I know. I'm done with Tinder, man. I'm all in. All right. So the point is, what was I talking about? They go on, they're little guys like me, and I meet these people and they're like, I'm eating 6,000 calories a day. And I'm thinking, for what? Why? Why Why are you working? They're trying to work against their bodies. You know, a lot of these people who are super skinny and they're like, man, I just can't put on size, so I'm just going to eat a million calories. It's like, work with what you have. If you have a nice, lean build, work with it. Don't work against it. So I try and work with what I have. So it doesn't take a whole variation of I'm going to eat. Now I'm eating 1900. Oh, it's the uh, winter season bulking time. Now I'm going to eat. I don't go to 6000. I'll go up to 2400. See how I feel. 25, 26, maybe 2700, you know. I'm feeling amazing at 2700 calories, man. My sex drive is up, my energy. It's the world of difference and I still get to stay tight year round. So let's just talk about it, man. My training 
it doesn't change, man. It doesn't change, you know, like I, I'm hitting like each muscle group once a week, whatever, you know, my cardio pretty much stays at three like hard hitting cardio days, whether I'm swimming, biking, or doing the stair mill and all that's interchangeable. Let's say I want to do the stair mill three times. That's okay. And then two additional sessions where I'm either walking my dog or doing yoga or something, you know, maybe lighter cardio or whatever, not killing myself cardio. Yoga is a heck of a workout though at that studio. So I, I, that's, I've always done five cardio sessions a week. That doesn't change. Now the difference is in the summer, maybe I'll be more conscious, spring or summer, maybe I'll be more conscious about like really getting my heart rate up during that cardio. Like I'm doing morning fasted cardio. I'm going to crank the, you know, like I'm really going to sweat more and, and try and, you know, focus on just being like ultra ripped. Maybe instead of getting my heart rate to like in the 130s, 140, my heart rate's going to be between like 150, 160, you know, maybe in those shredding months or whatever. So, so it's, it's, it's little changes, you know, that can go a long way, little change that can go a long way. So if I'm getting ultra tight, man, so I don't want to get too far away from myself, you know, in the, in the winter months where I got to go on some crazy shred diet to, to get back to where I want to be for the spring and summer, man. And then it feels like it's unfathomable. Like, oh my God, look at how much weight I gained because I was in the bulking season or off season or all that. Now it doesn't feel realistic to get back down to the shredding. So I'm just better off practicing restriction and staying on my regimen all year and just keeping it tight all year, man, and just adjusting by little calories. So my cardio and training pretty much stays the same all year. I'm putting my heart and soul, all that nonsense, homie, of, oh, well, uh, <laughs> in the summer I'm going to do... <laughs> I'm going to do higher reps for tone. <laughs> Some of the, you know, all that outdated garbage, man. I'm going to put my heart and soul. I don't think too much when I go in the gym, man. When I hit my garage, I just pump the iron. You know, I'm just blessed to be there. I'm vibing the music. I'm enjoying whatever pre-workout I'm on or non-stim pre-workout. I'm thanking God he allows me to pump iron. I don't need to get too caught up about all this stuff, man. Most of this stuff's going to be in the eating you know, and proper training and proper rest. My rest stays the same. Yeah, I'm just going through my whole regimen with you in case you're interested. If you're not interested, God bless you. Hit the like button and go to a channel you are interested in. Um, don't freaking leave, homie. You better stay right here. Sit still, son. Sit down. Um, you know, so what I'm saying is, uh, what the heck was I saying? Oh, my rest. I'm letting the dogs out now at 9.15 at night. Me and Stephanie are in bed now every night at 9.30. <laughs> the older I get, the earlier it gets. It's amazing. 9.30, and I'm waking up at 6. So let's say take, that's over eight hours of sleep a night, man. So my hormones are optimal. You know, I'm feeling freaking rested. I'm feeling amazing. And then I take like a 20 hit it, 20 hitter like 20 minute, excuse me, 20 minute hit or nap. Like as soon as I come home from work pretty much every day, 20 minutes, that's enough. And then I'm ready to train, man. Just a little rest on my brain from the day. You know, I woke up, I trained, I woke up, I prayed, I meditated, I trained, you know, I've dealt with the house, I've gone to work. Now I come home. I just need 20 minutes, man, just to close my eyes. And I'm ready to, I'm like fired up, man, to do cardio or pump iron or whatever my regimen calls for. I'm either doing, you know, uh, iron pumping in the morning, cardio in the afternoon. My favorite is cardio in the morning, iron pumping in the afternoon. The only problem with that is I don't get to use the pre-workouts I want to review in the after, you know, if I'm pumping iron in the afternoon. Because I don't take pre-workouts anywhere past the morning. Um, and then my supplementation stays the same, man. I'm on vitamin C, D, uh, B complex and zinc every, every day, pretty much. Uh, you know, if I forget a day or two on the weekend or whatever, I don't care. You know, it's in my system. Um, so I'm taking the vitamins. I take creatine now just in my pre-workout. So days I'm not hitting the weights, man. 
Uh, I'm not taking creatine, you know, it's saturating my system, man. I don't, I don't get too much in my head about this stuff. Um, I sip EAAs uh, through my training, a little intra workout, then I have protein powder, man. That's my supplementation regimen. That's all of it. I don't have a greens formula. Or the, the only time I have that is if a company sends it to me, I'll run it to review. But other than that, man, that's my supplementation. The vitamins, some creatine whenever I pump iron, uh, you know, um, EAA formula, some protein powder, and twice a week. Once a week or twice a week, I'll take uh, some Ninja Zen or some uh, Blackstone Labs and Nessertide just for the Fenobut hit, man. Just for a little little extras, man. It's not even conducive. It doesn't really do much. It gives me a little extra rest, deeper sleep, whatever. I already sleep like a baby. You know, my spirituality, always trying to grow spiritually, get closer to God, pray more, meditate more, review my day before I go to bed. You know, thank God, uh, pray for others. You know, uh, that, that doesn't change. I keep trying to grow and get better, closer to God, and pray more and more, and uh, rely on God to guide me and not guide myself. And uh, and my food, man, and we talked about it. The protein stays at 200 grams a day all year round. I don't change that. And I pretty much just adjust the car the calories besides that the carbs and maybe a little more fat but really it's the carbs I'm pulling up and down for most of the calories that I'm changing it's more carbs you know here if I want to feel better and you know the carbs I've learned that I can eat clean uh you know like I could stay really shredded man eating more food as long as I'm consistently eating clean it's the you know the weekend crazy cheat meals that you know bring me kind of back down because all that sodium bloat and water retention, you know, it takes a few days. If I go maniaco on the freaking Saturday and Sunday night, it takes me till, you know, Tuesday or Wednesday, you know, to, to feel kind of like really super tight again, man. I'm like doing sauna and, uh, you know, like cardio extra hard, you know, to get that water retention out, whatever it is, ch chugging the water, the 9.5 pH, drinking a gallon and a half a day. So yeah, man, I've always believed, I guess the point of this video is staying shredded year round has been the best for me, man. Instead of getting too far away from myself, eating some unnecessary amount to put on new muscle tissue, I don't care how big do I need to get first of all, and second of all, I don't I can build muscle, man, when I'm when I'm eating just a little surplus. I don't need a huge surplus of calories to build muscle. I could do it at 2,700 or 3,000 at the most, man. I, and that's a lot. I, I can, you know, you can build muscle probably if you're shredding. I mean, you get whatever it is, man, you can build, break down muscle, let it grow, feed it the proper nutrition. You can burn fat and build muscle. It's, uh, you know, you can do it. Uh, anyway, man, that's what I got for you. That's my regimen. And what have we talked about? Supplementation. We talked about eating. F I eat five, five times a day, man. I eat uh, three hot meals, two Papa Steve's bars, and a shake. In the bulking time, my shake might consist of uh, banana and peanut butter might be in there instead of just the two scoops of protein powder. That'll add some calories. Little tweaks, man, that just bring the calories up. Little easy ways to get more calories. That's what I got. Garage Gym Homie's always going to give it to you straight till the end of days. Let me know what you think, man. I don't know what the point of this video was except to talk to you guys, man. I love you guys. I love making content, talking about this stuff. God bless all of you. I'm out.